So this video is going to be dealing with chapter 13, section 2, which is the colligative properties of solutions. Now, colligative properties are properties of a solution that are dependent upon the concentration of solute, usually given in molality, which you'll remember is moles per kilogram of solvent. Now, the important thing about colligative properties is that they apply to all solutions, that is, a constant or a solution of salt water will exert colligative properties just as a solution of sugar will. The solute is not what matters, rather, rather the concentration of the solute is the important factor. The first of these colligative properties that we're going to be discussing is the lowering of a solvent's vapor pressure. Now if you'll remember vapor pressure within a container like this where you have let's say water is caused by molecules escaping into the gas phase as well as re-entering to the point where they are re-entering and leaving at the same rate leaving a consistent number of gas molecules up here. Now if we compare, compare this to let's say a solution where you have you know the normal number of water molecules spread through but you also have some sort of solute in here, you'll notice that at the surface the water has less of a uh, surface area than it did before because some of the molecules at the surface are going to be these solute molecules. So naturally because these solute molecule, molecules aren't going to leave the solution and join the gas phase, you're going to have fewer gas or water molecules rather leaving the solution than you did before and that means fewer molecules up here which in turn leads to a lower vapor pressure so in summary the vapor pressure of a solution will always be less than the vapor pressure of just the pure solvent in this case this would be H2O or the solution would be, let's say, salt water. Now if you'll remember what I mentioned earlier, colligative properties don't depend on the actual solute, this green stuff in here. So for example, this could be sucrose, and at 25 degrees Celsius, that would lower the vapor pressure by 5.5 times 10 to the negative fourth ATM. Or it could equally be, you know, glucose, and at the same temperature and pressure it would lower the vapor pressure just the same and this is why vapor pressure lowering is a colligative property because it depends on the molality of both of these solutions rather than the actual solute itself. So another colligative property we're going to be discussing is freezing point depression. Now what you can probably guess is that as you add the solute the freezing point, the point at which something freezes, becomes solid, will go down, that is the depression. And this applies specifically to non-electrolyte molecules because if you'll remember NaCl, which is an electrolyte, breaks up into Na plus ions and Cl minus ions. So the problem is when you add one mole of NaCl, you're really adding two moles of solute, one mole of Na plus ions and one mole of Cl minus ions. So for everything we're going to be discussing, it will be dealing with non-electrolyte solutes. Now that said, when you take one mole of this non-electrolyte solute and add it to one kilogram of water, through experimentation, chemists have determined that the freezing point depresses about uh, 1.86 degrees Celsius. Similarly, if you have two moles per one kilogram, that is a two mole solution, it depresses 3.72 degrees Celsius. And you can see that if you divide this uh, number here by 1.86, you'll get the two mole that you start off with. So this number, which is usually written as a negative because it's a drop in temperature, is what is known as the molal freezing point uh, constant and that is usually abbreviated as KF for constant 
at the freezing point. And this is basically defined as the drop in the freezing temperature in a one mole solution. That is one mole per one kilogram of solvent, in this case, water. So we can then take the knowledge of this constant and if we know the molality of a solution, we will then be able to calculate a temperature. And here is the general layout for that calculation. You take this constant right here. Oh, I forgot to write the units. The units for this are degrees Celsius per unit of molality. And then you just multiply the constant by the molality of the solution. So you can see that the temperature in degrees Celsius is equal to this constant, which converts molality to degrees Celsius. And you can see that if you cancel out the molality, you will get the temperature. So now that we know all this, we can calculate the actual freezing point depression of a given solution. For example, if we were given 17.1 grams of sucrose and asked to find the change in freezing point when added to 200 grams of water, we would now be able to calculate that. And the first thing you would have to do is find how many moles of sucrose you have. So you would use the molar mass as a conversion factor and if you add up all the carbons, hydrogens, and oxygens within sucrose, you get a molecular mass of 342.34 grams per mole, meaning that you have 0.05 moles of sucrose. Now you take this molar amount and divide by kilograms of solvent because that is uh, the molality of a solution. So we take the 0.05 moles of sucrose over what is essentially 0.2 kilograms of water and we end up with a molality of 0.25. Now we can take this molality and multiply it by the constant we discussed earlier to get the change in temperature. And simple as that, we take the molality, which is 0.25, multiply it by the constant, which is negative 1.86 degrees Celsius per unit of molality. The units of molality cancel and you end up with a depression of negative 0.465 degrees Celsius. Now you'll also notice that as you add solute to a solution, the boiling point will increase. And this is because if you'll remember, boiling point is the point at which the atmospheric pressure equals the vapor pressure. However, in a solution, the vapor pressure goes down. So you have to add more and more thermal energy to increase the vapor pressure enough to equal the atmospheric pressure, which of course stayed constant. Now through experimentation, scientists have determined that for each mole of uh, solvent, or solute rather, you add to a one kilogram solution of water, the boiling point raises by 0.51 degrees Celsius, meaning that the boiling point constant, the mole boiling point constant, much like the mole freezing point constant we discussed very briefly ago, um, is 0.51 degrees Celsius per unit of molality. And just like with the freezing point depression, we can use this constant to calculate the rise in boiling point elevation. So the change in temperature is equal to this constant, which is 0.51 degrees Celsius per unit of molality times the actual molality of the solution. And once again, you can see that the molality will cancel out and you will get matching units, degrees Celsius and degrees Celsius. So now let's say we're giving, given a 0.324 moles of some non-electrolyte solute and you want to find the change in temperature when that is added to 400 grams of water. So the first thing we have to do is obviously 
calculate the molality, which we'll use right here, because we already know the constant, and we're solving for the change in temperature. So we take this 0.324 uh, moles of solute for each 0.4 kilograms of water, because remember, molality has to correspond to kilograms. And when you do that calculation, you end up with a molality of 0.81. Now what you can do is multiply by this constant, which if you'll remember is 0.51 degrees Celsius per unit of molality, units of molality cancel, and you end up with a change in temperature of 0.41 degrees Celsius. That is, you have to raise the water 0.41 degrees Celsius more to get it to boil.